Morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be. Uh, this is the Wix Online Triage Meeting 9.5. So picking up where we left off last Thursday, uh, this is Tuesday, 11.5. Um, look at all those odd numbers, it's kind of fun. Anyway, uh, nothing here to talk about in the slide deck. Just want to remind everybody that these are recorded for those people that can't make it in person. But we're going to switch over and go talk about bugs. So here we are. This is kind of cool, 485 bugs. Feels kind of nice to be under 500. Actually, feels really nice to be under 500. So, and only a few of these are, or there's a few of them that came in recently. So we should start at the top. Uh, three, eight, uh, what, what? Oh, all right. So four, five, one support. Yeah, we should do that. Should we do it in three, eight or three X? Uh Detecting and or installing 451. Uh, yeah, actually, it's a really good question about installing, as in having package groups already authored. Yeah, that would be nice. I mean, we uh, should definitely be, do that. It, it would be nice, although last time we had a bit of help from someone on the .NET Framework team. Um, yeah, but I think it's just a matter of he heating the remote payload and all that kind of good stuff. I don't think it's that. Does Steve take care of the remote payload authoring? Yeah. Oh, well, that should be much easier then. Yeah. So. Um, detecting is interesting. Oh yeah. So there's you know point of you know that we have a trustworthy version. We should definitely do this. I I totally agree. We should do it. The question is, does it fit in three eight? That's the only question. Right, and that's that's where I'm like. Uh, so he takes care of the package group authoring. Detecting is interesting from a from an MSI perspective. Um, because off the top of my head, I don't know of any way of detecting 451 other than by the release value. No. Um, yeah. Um, well, anyway, uh, it, so that's the feature. Do we think it will get done in 3.8? Yeah, we should take a look at it for 3.8. Right. Cool. Um, it might be easier to do... Oh, actually, how did Burn handle? Burn will actually give integer values, so we don't have to worry about the stupid hash mark. It will. It can give you both compatible and the raw value. Yeah. Right. And it can even convert it into a version if you ask for it to do that. I think. Not that that'll help, but just saying. Then not for this now. Yeah. Um. Anyway. All right. So three eight and. Let's go team. <laughs> Be awesome to get that done, right? Agreed. All right. Torch error. I am trying to make a diff. I receive these errors. Yeah, they should go ask a good question on Wix users. Yeah, this is not a bug. XI means... There might be a bug in here, but we need to go have a discussion about whatever they did. Oh, XI, yeah, that you can only do that against the Wix outputs. Yes, they should go ask a question. We could always improve the documentation. Failed repair with V6. Oh, that doesn't sound good. No. That's not good if V6 is returning an error code of 1001, if that's the actual error code from the XE. Well... Uh Boy, if only we knew someone who'd written the V6 support. Well, I, yeah, I'll, I know what it does. It just wraps the custom, act, or it just wraps the XE, and then yeah. it gets the return code from the XE. And if if they return 1001, then we either have to work around it or ignore that error code. But I mean, it's a whole lot more work. So right now, it'll just it schedules the XE outright. I mean, you can see it here. It just poof, calls that XE. So you think this is v6 installed without actually not supporting repair? Well, or not yeah, supporting or, install yeah. while already installed. Yeah, but I thought that we uninstalled first and then installed or something like that. But um, the thing I'm a little confused is I thought we used this to repair. So usually, oh, so 1001 means unsupported command line? I don't know. I guess we'll have to look at it. I don't, yeah, I don't know off the top of my head. It would surprise me if this doesn't support repair at all, given the people that used it. 
that if you would think it That's would force repair or would be point. failing a lot more. Yeah. So I don't know what's going wrong, but um, and this has invalid command line, so maybe it's just we're passing a bad command line over here and. Maybe you can't pass admin on repair or something. But then again, that would be failing for everyone. I don't know. I don't know. We have to go look at it. Um, it's in 3.7, so it's not new to 3.8. It's probably in 3.6, if this existed in 3.6. 3x? It's worth that now. Unfortunately, we're going to touch 3.6 anyway. You want to look at uh, 3.8? And... I will take this to investigate. All right. Um, just to see if we can determine what the 1001 code means. Yep. And not necessarily 3.8 for a fix. Sounds fine to me. Product code page attribute ignored by light. Wow. It's a bold statement. That seems really bad. String was provided with characters not available in the specified database code page 1252. Regression of some other bug? Oh, it reports for code page 1250. Um, th th yeah, this could, this error is also supplied when you have invalid uh, summary. You have invalid characters for the summary code page. Yeah. I would expect things to be really hosed if we were always ignoring 1252 because we have a lot of local stuff that switches the code yeah. page. But yeah. 3x and go hunt it down. It's not new in 3.8 at least. Man. Um. Yeah, 3x for now. I will leave a comment that says, please supply a small repro. Because, you know, well, I'll add a comment. If I can't simply repro it, then I will add a comment. Sounds, please repro. Sounds awesome. Data type mismatch, exe package, exit code value. Mm, tree is signed integer. Oh, and then it's an unsigned over there. And they yeah. have some crazy exit code. That well, unfortunately, could. all the error exit codes, if they're H result errors. Yeah, that seems kind of goofy that we didn't get that right. So, yeah, should fix that. Um, this is, pr I don't know that we have any unsigned support in compiler core. Are we going no, to add that? No, but we have long, I think. We have long, so you can just okay. go long. Um, it doesn't sound right, though, as 32-bit sign versus 32-bit unsigned. Because you could get a negative. I mean, that negative number should work. Well, I bet that's failing inside. Yeah, but I don't know why that would be failing inside... But, right, cause, I mean, you can take a signed integer, put it in there, and have the engine interpret it as, you know, unsigned, and it's all good. I mean, negative one is basically just F, 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 right? So if you put negative one, oh, unless it's stored as a, yeah, but even then, if it's stored as a signed, we read it out. Oh, unless we read it out as an unsigned, I see, we read it as unsigned, which means if we see the negative, it fails. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably what's happening is if it sees the negative anyway um, kind of makes you think that the exit code should be actually signed is there an e dash for that hmm? is there an existing h result for that I'm just thinking in burn it probably should just be like a long and allow it to be signed, probably the best thing. 
Uh, you are correct. We use stir string to U int 32. Which forces it to not have a negative. So, yep. um, yeah, well, this is a bug. The question is, when do we want to fix it? I would say we put it in 3x. We can pick it up next time around. We wouldn't hold 3a for it. It's been around yeah. since the beginning of burn. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I, I mean, it's not right. We should fix it, but... Yep. Support VS 2013. V6 hasn't been updated 2013. Oh. Okay. Right. So do we take this in 3.8? Uh, yeah, I think we should. All right. <laughs> this is why you were willing to take that other V6 right, thing, because right. you're going to look at this one. All right. It, we should. I mean, it's 2013 support, and sad if this thing... This thing, I know, yeah, the logic in this kind of gets goofy. Could be fun. Yeah. Could be fun. <sighs> well, it's hard to test, because it relies on all the, um, yeah, different combinations. It is very challenging, yes. All right, now we're into... These bugs are still this. Uh, there's a guy that, yeah, I think this guy, yeah, this guy has submitted a uh, fix for this bug or a pull request, and we were, I was commenting on it. Um, okay. So I, I think this is fine in 3x, and we'll get it whenever he gets done, probably in 3.9, which hopefully opens by the end of the week. I, I wasn't, I wasn't really clear on the fix or the, um, or the actual error. Uh, my understanding is that from this is that file ID um, can only be so long, and if they have a lot of long IDs, then they're blowing out whatever the MSI allows the cabinets to match up inside stuff. And although you think more people would be hitting this, right? Because we have yeah, people that ignore the 72 characters all the time. Right. And I, I, it, again, it wasn't clear that I, I wasn't I wasn't understanding how the um, well, this is probably just my understanding, my lack of understanding of, of the tables, but why each file would get its own stream? Oh, this must not be for that file. I thought that there'd end up, there'd be one cab at the end of everything. There would be. You're right, so, I don't know why this is a problem. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, should we? Sounds like we should have that discussion on this bug too. And I, uh, I agree react. with that. All right, sounds great. You're right. Now that you mention it, yeah. Does this make sense? The, the binary value of this will be stored with string name, but that surprises me. That well, anyway, this is my lack of uh, yeah. detailed stuff about patching. I always have to go look it up in detail and say, yeah, okay, whatever. So, yes. Whoa, the bug from seven months ago. That's kind of weird. Oh, what? Oh, so, all right. That means it has my name on it. Hmm, interesting. I have a bug sign to me. So anyway, we'll open that in 3x. This bug, it looks like these do not have entries in the Wixel files. Um, I, I untriaged this. Okay. Retriaged, yes. Uh, yes, untriaged, fine. Uh, uh, so the, the problem here is that we, we're we adding all of these entries. They're not used anywhere. Uh, or, sorry, they're used um, from the error progress yeah. table. Yeah. Um, but they're all completely unlocalized. <laughs> they're all English. Oh. Um, and... I've always had a, a love-hate relationship with the idea that we should be supplying localized error and progress text. Because if, you know, you don't, MSI will provide them. That's right. So At least for their the, errors. These are, yeah, because these are all MSI things, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm kind of like, it's, it's interesting to provide placeholders so that someone can localize them if they want them to sound prettier. Um, I don't know that anyone actually has ever done that, 
but it's theoretically possible. Um, but that I just this this kind of is like, oh, this doesn't make sense to me. It's like we're gonna take away the OS loc and supply our own non loc, which is vastly inferior as far as loc goes. Um, Except that it would match your MSI instead of the system, which may or may not be what you want. But or no, does it pick the MSI language first? Maybe it picks the MSI language. Yeah. So you're right. Well, we shouldn't give localized stuff English strings. <laughs> we should at least get rid of the English error messages from all the other languages. Um, and then at that point, if we haven't added any useful data in the error messages for the standard ones, then we probably shouldn't ship those either and just let MSI handle all that standard things. I don't know what I was thinking. Um, yeah, I tend to agree with that. So, 3x? Uh, well, the problem is you already took this. This is why it's assigned to you. Right. So, we need to revert this. Sure. Or get them localized. But they're over. Uh, when was this in? Is this in three eight? This is already in. Yeah. Is it in three eight or is it in something earlier? Oh. Um. I don't know. Seven months ago. Oh yeah. No, this. You said. Hold on. Um. You accepted the pull request on April 22nd, 2013, so it would be in 3.8. Right, and so then the question is, do we loc them, or do we loc that, or do we pull all of the Wixel files out? That's the trick, isn't it? Yes, right, so he provided, right. All right, um... And what we're proposing is to pull the error data out of all of the Wixel files? Um, grumble, grumble, grumble. I don't, I'm not sure. I yeah, mean, to be I, honest, I, I, I'm, I'm a little worried about doing that too. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I would like to leave them localizable. Um, they should be localizable. I hope those are all overridable. Yeah, I assume so. Um, but again, right now there's right now there's English in your you know German loc. Right. Yeah, and so it basically comes down to we need those loked, and we couldn't loke them, so rather than get an error, we pull them out, and then I guess I'm worried about pulling these out in 3.8. I'm, I'm, I'm worried about, so, all right, let's say this. We can't just revert this change, because then you end up broken. No. You try to pull the Wixel files in, right? No. If you revert this change, you get OS loke, and you're unable to override the OS loke. Oh. That's the the problem. You're not broken. If you were broken, that'd be, you know, one thing. You can't localize it because we don't pull in this. Well, I'm sorry. No, you could localize it. You, you could just write localize your it yourself if you wanted to. Yes. We just don't provide the, you know, the default, uh, what do you want to call it? We have this big fragment that, you know, pulls in the loc strings for all the OS messages. You would have to do it yourself which is not difficult. No, see, this is, something's broken because you're going to be missing the loc symbols for those names. It, mm. it is broken. No, no, because the only thing that... So, well, I mean, look at the... Uh, can you go back to the... Yeah, I should just quit closing it. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing refers to those... Um, to those loc strings. Without this change. So oh, without this change. Right. 
See, that's what got me. I thought we were broken, no. but we're not because nothing was referring to these things. So you ended up with, as you said, the system shining through. Right. Blah. And you could have, yeah, you're right. It's probably right to revert this change. And especially with error messages, because those are definitely, those definitely come from the system. Yeah, we should just revert this. Easy enough to add those if you want to localize them, so. Yay, you get to go into Git and try to how to revert one change set. I haven't done that yet. Well, luckily the revert command is your friend. Hopefully it hasn't gone through anything. No, I expect this will be pretty straightforward. Yeah, I don't think Although it's going to have to survive the renames. Although it might not have No, I don't even think this, this code didn't get moved either. Yeah, you're right. Ooh. All right. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Yep. Okay. So bring this back at 3.8 with the goal of reverting and moving and all that kind of stuff. Do you want me doing that? Or do you want to take a shot at the get foo? Yeah, I can do that one. All right. Then it won't be assigned to me anymore. Yes. I'm I'm just not with time right now, so I'm a little hesitant about getting into new things right now. <laughs> not a problem. Um, I, yeah, I fly in a little over a week, and I'm not quite ready for that. <laughs> so anyway, um, onward. Internet shortcut needs icon. Sure. I can. I can see that. Yeah. Sure. Why not? That'd be cool. And someone even says how to do it. Perfect. It's a straightforward thing for someone to take on. Three X. Should be additive. Sure. Firewall exceptions cannot be set for combined profiles. Cool. We should do that. Yes, but can I just point out that changing the XML schema is not is a necessary but not sufficient piece of the work? I think that's completely fine if you want to add that comment. Thank you. I won't, but... But yeah, I mean, this could be done 3x. I don't know if it has to be I think I think it's just an enhancement, so I don't think it's um, Yeah, I think it can be done in three X, although it's we might be uh I will have to look and see and see what the table register No, that's all in representation. Business. Oh yeah. Well um, yeah. But we we did that already with um yeah, the change three seven, so I think we're okay. Gaming extension. We're done with this, right? <laughs> Wow. Technically, there is actually still a gaming window in Windows 7. No, I meant gaming extension. They just had, you know, gaming extension. Like, well, we wrote one of those. Done. Anyway, oh. uh, bad title on a bug, anyway. Yeah. Uh, error writing, so better. This is per user. Oh, They're that's appropriate. Per so that would be a great word to have added to the beginning of that title. Anyway. Cool. Yeah, looks like a bug. Or a feature, feature. sorry. Feature. Yep. Yeah, cool. Could totally do that. And 3X, right? Sure. The ability to add per user things. Yeah, this is the exclude file thing. I know we have another bug. Exclude yeah. or include, so it's something like this. Yeah, totally. That could be done in 3X if someone wanted to do it. Light cannot be run from a make file. I don't put, whoa, <laughs> funny, <laughs> that's awesome. Oh. Wow, markdown, gone awry. Anyway, oh, when I try to run a light command from make, I get the following error, directory not found. Oh, that's 
that's not even coming from light. Uh, yeah, it is. Well, it's sorry, it's coming from light, but the input it, it looks like it's a like a response file. Mm-hmm. So to make sure, oh, the workaround is to make sure the temp folder exists before running light. Oh, so if you tell light to run with a temp folder that doesn't exist, then it might do that. Okay. So the fix here is to make sure that we create the temp folder before light tries to use it, probably. Like the temp folder or yeah. the whatever, step? whatever you set your temp folder to be. I'm surprised you can boot the machine pointing to an invalid temp directory. Well, I'm sure you can set Wix temp pointing to a folder that doesn't exist and have light go sideways. Oh, well, all right then. Um, we have this occasion where it's like, you know, do we create the folder? Right now, we usually create the folders, I think. Well, we create the output folders because for the same reason, people, yeah. you know. Yeah, so it's like, fine. Uh, we, we could create it. I mean, if we're going to put something in it, we can create it and call it good. Yeah. So. Okay, 3x? Yeah, I could go 3x. Broken links in the manual. Oh, this is another one with uh, the case. I think this is case. So let's let's go ahead and call this one closed. Yeah, because casing no longer matters. We do still have the tilde problem, but that is a different problem. MS build torch isn't documented. Really? That is probably true. Okay. Uh, actually, I, I don't know if that's true anymore. Um, it is true. We do not document the torch task. Cool. We should do that. VSUI not updated. Wix extension path with configuration. Okay. is to add reference browse DLL even if it's in the same solution. So the full path property of extension is not evaluated in the icon that the reference is updated as a bug. Um, sure, I could believe this happening. Um, okay, I don't. I wouldn't surprise me. Like, like a custom Wix extension? Yeah, it looks like it, because they're trying to refer to something in their own solution, which makes sense. And then Votive apparently having issues trying to do that, which wouldn't surprise me. I don't know that we've ever tried. Oh, because, I it's the it's the configuration macro again. Yeah, probably. I uh, yeah so. Yeah, someone could go in and fix Votive to handle that. I totally yep. think it'd be a reasonable thing to do in 3x. Be awesome. Yep. Heat fails when trying to harvest null registry keys. Really? Oh, Heat 3.0 works though. Sweet. I don't care. <laughs> so, heat 3.0 works. Something failed or regressed. No, this is oh three five oh three oh. You're right. This is three five. Oh dang! I thought it was two zero. Oh. I guess we're not that. Our bugs aren't that old, huh? Remember, uh, heat, heat was new in three zero. Oh. Yes. No, heat was new. In, was it in three zero? Oh? Yeah, it replaced Talo oh. in two zero. Oh. Talo was two. Okay, so heat didn't come in three five. It came in three zero. Oh. Yep. Um. I have a feeling this has been fixed because I don't think because we had that whole reg file thing. And I think that works now, too. I would say we close this, and if it comes back, we'll we'll know. I would resolve this as fixed. Well, sorry, I'm not familiar. What change are you, were you talking about? It, because I, I remember someone, I think it was Neil, actually, that did the reg file processing. And I just something reminded me of that this being hit of the empty reg keys. This, oh, this oh, this is null. Sorry. 
And this is not a dot .rich file. No, I know it's not a dot .rich, but Adrian will run through the same processing in the end, I think. Oh, okay. But this is a null value. Well, that might be true. Null registry key. And I don't know. I guess we could open 3x. Someone could go look at it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Current wild cards in this project are not currently supported. Is this votive not doing wild cards? Star.proj files. Uh, oh, I see. You have another item group. In that is project. that is not. Oh, that's too bad. <laughs> votive doesn't handle that. That's that kind of sucks. Kind of surprising, but eh, maybe it's not. Yeah, it looks like there's an explicit error message for it. So cool. Yeah. It, it explicitly gets upset about that. Right. So this is a. I think this is a feature request then, right? Fifty-one. Fifty of another. Yeah, fine. It's not I the guess. right expression, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't care. It's in votive. Yes, it, 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 it should be fixed, along with all the other gazillion things that are busted in votive, I'm sure. So, yeah. Yes, and it could probably be fixed in 3x, right? I assume. Better localization for license agreement. License agreement must be hard-coded by a compiler variable. Really? I think this is now is this not a is this not a Wix variable now? Yeah, that's interesting. Where is that? Remember, yeah, they're bind variables now. Yeah, this has changed. We fixed this. You can now specify this as a, a Wix variable. This has been fixed. You can now use a. Um, you can now use the Wix UI license RTF as a Wix variable, and that is much more localizable. Cool. So I'd say this is fixed. Um, okay, I'll I'll take your word for it. I'm not familiar with. I just look. The text is set to a Wix uh, a binder variable a Wix UI license RTF, which is defaulted to the preprocessor variable. That no, so you can set it either way. So anyway, yes, they have a better way of doing that now. Add property group and property group ref elements. I guess, I guess. Property group, property group ref, instead of property ref. So you can get this by putting a bunch of properties in a fragment and referring to one of them. But it's not yes. as clean as, necessarily as clean as saying property group ref. Well, this is, you know, this is the problem we have with getting rid of fragment ref. No, but this is exactly why we get rid of fragment ref, because then we do things that are specifically useful. Yeah, the, the problem the problem here is we have to add a group to give to, to we have to give a group to allow you to have a um, reasonable name. Yeah. Yeah. There. I don't want to bring my fragment ref. 
No, sorry, not going that far. But um, yeah, this is this is one of those. I was like, oh, really? I, I hate making the language more complicated to cover that particular case. Well, I guess for me, it's the we need to create groupings of things that should be grouped. So it's not a complication, it's just a you know, truth kind of thing. It's like, a, this is a useful construct. Uh, OK. I, I mean, so it's I, I kind of waffle that, it's, that grouping properties is all that common. But well, that that I'm, that's that's a completely valid argument. <laughs> it's not that common. I don't think it's that common. However, they do have the whole you know here's our IS properties. Yeah. Which is exactly what he did do. I mean that's what he says right here. Well, I mean, the problem with that is that you're pulling in, you're creating an, an extra properties or an extra property. Yes, I'm right. To allow for grouping. Right. That I just like because it has output. Yeah, it ends up in the output. I wonder if we, no, I mean, that's just basically fragment ref by another name then. I was thinking we could do an unreal kind of thing where you do an unreal refer, a reference that creates an unreal object and then you don't care. But that's just arbitrary linking of things. Yeah, that's fragment ref. And that's just fragment ref at that point. Oh, of course, you can actually do this today. Component group. Uh, <laughs> um... I don't actually. I don't think component group will work for that because component component group can't be empty. Feature group can be empty. <laughs> okay, fine. I knew it was one of them. Yeah. Abusing the language. Yep. I don't know. I, I'm. <laughs> I, I'm not opposed to it. I guess it, I'm just. I guess it's consistent. So yeah, that's. There's something to be said. But we that. haven't had it for a number of years, and there hasn't been any more upvotes or anything like that. People, I suppose, just live with it. But I mean, it really does come down to how often does happen. And like they they point out on the thread, if it happens that often, how bad is like is that a bad pattern, right? Should you not have that many properties floating out there? Which is a good point. And should you instead yeah. be using something else than properties? I can I can cer certainly see I can certainly see it as a point of abuse. <laughs> if you're using that many properties, it might be because you're you know doing a yeah. You know, you've got a custom you table in your property action. table. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you're probably using it for some custom action thing or. No, that's fair. And property, no, see, that, the other thing is that property group is only going to let you pull in, well, no, it will let you pull in app searches as well. True, but app searches usually are better off to do, um, usually the name of the property in app search is pretty good, so you, you generally want property ref that. I mean, that's how we pull all our app searches in, and that's generally a good thing. Yeah. And then if you need multiple searches to go together, you put in the same fragment, and one of them is the name that you want, or whatever, you know. So that's not that that's not the case for property group, in I in my mind. It's like name the searched property well, and then everything works out really well. But without app search, the only thing you're getting is a bunch of static properties. Correct. If it's not the app search case, and you're pulling, I mean, well, uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm not, I'm not sold on this element. 
I'm I'm having trouble seeing where it's high value. Let's say let's say no, uh, and keep for your language argument and not bloat the language. Mm -hmm. And let's see if it comes back. Okay. We'll take you know always take comments on decisions and be like no 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 really this reason this reason and maybe if we get a a litany of reasons documented in the bug then we'll be like oh you know that's a good point I guess it would really help. But at a certain point I, th I think the point you know th they may is the whole if you end up with this many properties maybe it's time to rethink the way that you're doing your custom tables <laughs> or maybe you need a custom table and. And if you're doing searches, then just name one of the properties well to do the search, and then that works out. So I, I think that's like the two cases. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, I say let's let's not take the language feature and see if it comes back. That works. I, I've never heard anybody ask for it since then. That's why I'm kind of like, yeah, let's just lean that way for now. Heat could not harvest Capicom. What the heck are you doing harvesting Capicom? Yeah, don't do that. Uh, can we close this bug as don't do that? <laughs> there, there, there's a merge module or something out there for Capicom. Don't don't redistribute their reg keys. So, yeah. Can we make that go away? Agreed? I'm assuming. Yes. What? Com plus doesn't work for type.net. Maybe it could fix a system edit problem, but I'd rather go after a real self reg problem. We have had bugs that are about self reg, and we've so far been able to track all those down. So it's true. It could be a system edit problem, but we're not going to keep a Capicom. Let's make that certainly not the way that we want to say, oh, yes, go harvest Capicom. No, <laughs> not harvest Windows. Do not harvest Windows stuff. Um, all right, com plus application doesn't work for type.net. I've already exists. It doesn't, and it does that. <sighs> they got this working to resolve as the DLLs. Regasm. Oh. Wow. Yeah, com plus goo. Hmm. Uh, we could put it in 3x. Someone wants to go hunt down the root fix for this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. I'm just. Down plus, okay, whatever. I have no idea what's involved in well, this. I don't want to toss the bug, because it looks like in the end they've got to work around, but regazing a, a TLB isn't good, because regazing isn't on the Redis list, so you're not actually allowed to do that, at least last right. I checked. So this is all bad, so it's like, yeah, something something better should be done here. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> it can go in 3x, and one day maybe we'll hope someone will come along and go in deep into com plus. All right, Wix UI, you want to be able to skip the license agreement. Instead, a stock dialog should be extended with no EULA versions. Ugh. No. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> we don't need um, more. <laughs> yeah, no, this is, um, I don't, yeah, don't want to, to blow up the number of, of dialog sets. We have too many as it is. Um, but look, as a Wix amateur, they're posting in here and someone else finds it useful. So, I mean... That's great. That's I don't want to add it they, to, the, to the basis. Uh, not, not, you know, no EULA versions of everything. And, and, in, and in truth, what we should have here is, well, <laughs> going way, way back... This is where an extension should, you know, magically take care of this stuff. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, 
and I forget, is this one of those things that you can work around or you can control by redirecting all the dialogues and all that? Yeah, yeah. You all need right. to create a new, a new okay. set. Yeah, um, fine. That's what you do. Uh, and the question I, is, do we want to have, like, I, I guess what it would say is we should, um, we could get rid of one of our existing ones and convert it into a new Aluya, a no Eula. Yeah, that's not going to, I mean, it's perfectly reasonable to want a no Eula version of any of the, any of the existing dialogue sets. Right. Um, except Mondo, that's. <laughs> no one should be using Mondo. <laughs> um, I, I'm I'm fine with taking this in 3x and adding it as an option. I think there's probably we can probably do it with the Wix variable approach that we used in Wix UI Advanced. Okay. So you don't have to you know pollute with properties and whatnot. Um, you can make all the decisions at build time based on how your uh, uh, Wix variables are set. Seems reasonable to me. That would have the ability to turn off EULA with the Wix UI extension, whatever. Yep. All right. Website should not be recon reconfigured during major upgrade. Well, it does depend on when you schedule your major upgrade. No, this, this, no, I mean, it's being uninstalled and installed, and that means that your major upgrade is being uninstalled and installed again. And I do agree that it will modify settings on IIS. This is the whole, how much do we configure if it already exists and stuff like that. Um, so... Um, I think this is no, and this is more, this is like, yeah, if you don't want it to be uninstalled and then installed, don't schedule a major upgrade early, right? I mean, we can't, yeah. so there's that. And then there's, there is another bug out there from before, that is the, it'd be nice if there are more ways to configure your website settings to not overwrite and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's very complex options that people want which are going to be challenging for us to do in the end. All of them. But I don't know, I mean, it's what Major Upgrade does. Yeah. Well, as long as the IAS custom actions know to handle component reinstall, then yeah, it's not that, a bug, it, it's a yeah, right. feature request. Yeah. They, or, they, yeah. It is a feature request. and It, it is a feature request. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's not behaving badly that's kind of doing what you would want it to do because you might want the pristine install. That's right. So, Maybe. and this is also, they must be scheduling their major upgrade early, which is why it's removing and then installing again. Yep. So I think that's part of the answer. And then the other part of the answer probably is going to be they don't want it to configure as much as it does, but. Um, Separate yeah. point for that. Yes. And there's, you know, there's all these other options of trying and going and reading all the existing IS stuff, pulling settings out, you know, and then making decisions and keeping the ones you want and then applying, you know, it's it's a whole lot of logic you could do in there. It's like, I want to keep these five settings because the user customized them, but definitely reset the app pools, you know, or, or whatever. Right, right, right. Uh, you know, the user passwords, you know, pull those out, save them, and then, you know, the user, uh, anyway, it's challenging. And, of course, everything has to be done on the elevated side. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, so, IIS. Yes. So it's going to be challenging. So anyway, that, I don't think that's... They can fix this by scheduling their major upgrade in a different spot, and then there's the other bugs, feature requests out there to do more in our custom actions. All right. Let's see if we can get this one. Custom actions receiving internet error fail to set shortcut. Turns out we did not have IE on the system. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, I have no idea if this is possible on anything other than server core anymore. But it's definitely possible. Actually, we had someone hit this on server core. Uh, the guys working on Node hit this on server car. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they may have fixed it. 
actually, now that I think about it, this may be fixed already. I don't think they changed. No, they didn't change archive. Yeah, they, no, no, I, where is this extension? That's in Udo. It's in Udo? Yep. Yeah, so does that mean the code in Wix CA? Yes. Which one is it? Net shortcuts. Net shortcuts. Internet shortcuts. Net shortcuts. Um, right. So it now tries to create the class ID. Oh, that's right. We did get a we did get a pull request for yes. something. Yeah, they, this this does, and it, pr it prints we out a message this. saying you don't have you know Internet Explorer, so we're not creating shortcuts, and it gives you a log message, and it just continues on. So I think this is fixed. We just don't have a continuing error. I think it's just a just go because they don't have Internet Explorer. Just keep going. I, did Jacob put a pull request in for this? That's what I want. No, to it, 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 I, if I remember correctly, it came from one of the guys working on Node. Oh, wow. Okay. Because I remember them pinging me as it kept sliding out of my window until finally we got on the code play. I mean, it was we moved to Git. I mean, they were part of that whole transition. So anyway, I think this is now fixed. Cool. Yeah, no, I remember the, the change. Not, not this way, but it's fixed. Basically. Correct. Yeah, this was. Um, yeah, no, I remember that change. Yeah. All right, so I think we can make that bug go away, and I think that's all we're going to get through today. We got. Eh. You said they were going to go faster when we got into the old books. <laughs> <laughs> well, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That's only twenty bugs this week. Oh well, that's why we're doing double doubles. <laughs> um, oh, light cannot find with type blank. Oh gosh, I hate these. Oh, stating it doesn't exist. Really? Oh. So anyway, I guess that's where we'll pick up. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. We're 460. That's not a huge jump, but it's okay. I guess we, every day is a more progress, right? I like the right. better when we're doing 50 a day. That felt pretty good, but maybe yeah, we're going to get harder. That didn't help. Yeah. So, all right, that's what we got. I'll talk to you guys um, Thursday, hopefully. Hopefully, see you guys all in a couple days. Anyway, talk to you later. Bye. Bye.